particularly Sam talk about the glory of God that we could see on this planet, on this earth. And many people believe that it is created by God. The science also think that the world, the universe is created by God. You know, but some people, those who do not believe in God, still argues that it is just created and made of its own. But the word of God clearly says that da the, the David, the psalmist here says, you know, it's everything is created by God. So what is that to me? It is important, therefore, God knows everything what is happening in our lives. And when we go out, he knows that. When we walk towards, he knows that. And when we come in, he knows that. And we, God knows every of our struggles that we face today. And today, as we are going to worship the Lord in truth and spirit, as David prayed to God, God, you know, reveal my sinful nature. He here mentioned, you know, the guy who knows of his fault, of his, of his sin, find favor in the eyes of the Lord. And today, let this be a prayer. Lord, cleanse me completely. I want to worship you, Lord. And God has given us a wonderful day. God has given us everything what we enjoy right now. The health, the wealth, a good family, a house to live in, the food to have, and everything. It's all blessing from the Lord. Would you want to say thank you, Jesus? Lord, we want to thank you. Lord, hallelujah. Shall we look to God in prayer? Lord, we adore you today morning. We just come to your throne of grace with thanksgiving. And we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all your provisions in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for, for being a good friend to me. You know, when I was going through a difficult situation, thank you, Jesus, for being with me, O oh Lord. And I want to pray for everyone who are taking part in this morning worship service. And we pray that the Lord, you would speak to our hearts today morning. So that we will be encouraged, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us. Also pray for the worship team and also pray for Wolfgang as he's also sharing from your word and your love. Pray that the Lord, you would speak through him, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for listening and answering your prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we humbly pray. Amen. So I would welcome all of you for this morning devotion of Adonai International Church Bond. And we are happy that you could also take part in our worship service. I come before you today, O oh Lord. There's just one thing I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I want to praise and bless your name. Just one thing that I want to say Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord For all you give unto me For all the blessings that I cannot see Thank you, Lord Grateful heart, with the song of praise, with an outstretched chant, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've done in my life You 
took my darkness and gave me your love Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord You took my sin and my shame You took my sickness and healed all my pain Thank you, Lord With a brave heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched hand, I'll bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The reason why we worship the Lord today is because our Savior, Jesus Christ, still live for us. And He came down to the earth to save us, like people like us, the sinners, and to make His own children. And what a privilege that we got today. And therefore we can say that my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, still lives for me. Hallelujah. I know He rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. Let's take a, uh, sing this together and worship the Lord. I know He rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in His name. I believe. I believe. I raise the banner. Oh, my Lord has conquered the grave, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer I know He rescued my soul His blood has covered my sin I believe I believe My shame is taken away Yes, He is My pain is healed in His name I believe I believe I'll raise it I'll raise the banner, oh, my Lord has conquered my grave, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer Sing with us, my Redeemer lives, hallelujah, my Redeemer lives, you lift my God I'll rise to this mountain top to see your kingdom God my redeemer lives 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 my redeemer Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you today morning because we know that you are still living for us. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hear our prayer, Lord. Oh, you are Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear our prayer. We are your children and we gather here today. We gather here to pray. Here I come, Lord, we need your mercy and we need your grace today. Here I stand. Rises to heaven, may your glory fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. See your heart and remove anything that is standing in the way of coming to you. Would be thy name, our Father. Hear us from heaven, forgive us sins, we pray. And though we are few, we surrounded by many, we have crossed the river before. This is the song. We'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for listening unto song, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for listening to our prayer, O Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, we worship you, Lord. We lift your name up, O Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Align, Dusk Dade. Stay here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Ganz nah am Sein Herzet zu sein. Du vor Hände halten mich. Ich darf bei dir sein ewiglich. Wenn mich mein Herz erneut verdammt. 
Zeit entfloß mir zweifelhaft. Die Stimme meines Herrn, die Furcht muss frieden, ich bin zart. O Fragen, Herr, der für mich kehrt und meine Seele ewig Dein Blut macht mich wahr, du nennst mich ganz da, in deinem Namen darf ich sein. Sieh doch, wie herrlich ist du sie. Der alle Schönheit übertrübt. Die Liebe in Person ist hier. Gerät und treu steht er zu mir. Hallo, so lang, reich niemals an, ihn so zu hören wie im Gefühl. Ich komm, ich vor dem Thron, weil ich vor ihm durch den Sohn. Dein Blut macht mich schwach, denn du bist ganz da, in deinem Armen darf ich sein. Mut, ich komm, ich komm, ich komm, ich komm, ich vor dem Thron. Frag ich brauchen durch den Sohn. Dein Blut macht mich schwach, du nennst mich ganz da. In deinem Armen darf ich sein. Das ist der Grund, warum wir feiern. Das ist der Grund, warum wir feiern. Wir sind befreit, der Trug und Tag. Preis den Herrn, preis den Herrn, ihr Herr von meiner Schubitza. Feig ich brauchen durch den Sohn. Dein Blut mag mich schwach, du nennst mich ganz da. In deinem Armen darf ich sein. In deinem Armen darf ich sein. Oh, what a privilege, Lord. Hallelujah. The reason why we worship you today, Lord. The ground where we are fire and high till, Lord. Because you are our Savior. You are our Redeemer. And therefore we want to worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, once again we want to thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you for your grace, O Lord. We thank you once for thine gnade, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your salvation. Thank you, God. Thank God for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank the Father for the Holy Ghost. As we are sitting in the worship, O Lord, and listening from your word, O Lord, and pray that the Lord, you would speak to our hearts today. Thank you, Jesus, for listening and answering our prayers. 
the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we humbly pray. Amen. 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 So once again, as I said earlier, it's a great honor to worship the Lord in truth and spirit. I know that uh, we have today a lot of friends for the first time joining a worship service of Adonai family. So you're very welcome to worship the Lord always with us. And our service is every Sunday, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. So uh, we are so happy that you are also here with us. And uh, it's the time to listen from God's word today. And uh, today, we are so much happy to uh, have Wolfgang with us and sharing from God's word. And uh, he's uh, teaching also in the Bible seminary in Bonn. And we also had the privilege to meet him personally and to talk to him and pray with him. And uh, we are happy today to listen from Wolfgang. So let's be in a prayerful attitude. You know, as we we are going to listen to a sermon. Please always um, sit, sit with an attitude of listening and accepting the fact. And when you start listening carefully, the Lord is going to bless you. So it's a time to listen from God's word and over to Wolfgang. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Isaac. I'm just scrolling through and I'm very glad to see friends of old times from my time in Liverpool, people from churches that have been a very, very great blessing uh, for me and personal friendship and inviting me. So I'm very glad you all joined and other friends uh, from different times, even, um, yeah, I'm very glad to see you. So, um, today, in a sermon, um, before I preach, I always like to take, say, two or three minutes for silent prayer. So if you please let us have two or three minutes of silent prayer, uh, put everything before the Lord, which uh, burdens our heart and uh, disturbs our heart. And I just pr let us just pray for God's blessing that we might hear and speak in a way that is pleasing to God doing his will, that God may bless all our hearts through what is being said in this sermon. So two to three minutes and then. I Amen. Amen. So please open your Bibles. Please open your Bibles and turn with me to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Now, um, praying and prayer is something that many people uh, do and use in order to achieve something from God or to have some effect on it. I guess that probably most religions know some sort of prayer. Um, and of course, as Christians, we know we are really privileged to pray. And when it comes to prayer, of course, um, we should always ask the master of all prayers, which is Jesus. Well, his disciples, Jesus' disciples, they actually uh, thought the same. They watched him praying, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. So uh, they knew the disciples of John the Baptist. And of course, John the Baptist, he said to his disciple how they ought to pray. But of course, Jesus is much greater than John. So one of the disciples said, OK, Lord, teach us to pray. How shall we pray? How shall we speak to God? What, uh, what do you think? So Jesus said, verse 2, 11, verse 2, he said to them, whenever you pray, say. So Father, Father. He starts with Father, which is a relational term. So he said, you can address God as your Father. But let us notice, it is not something which is there for every man. It is not by nature that we can call God our Father. By nature, we are distant from God. 
we are not God's children. By nature, the Bible tells us we are dead. We are under this sin. We have sinned against God's holiness. And God, um, since he is holy and righteous, cannot have a relationship with us as long as sin rules in our lives. So there's no way we can do anything to, to get rid of our sins. Um, but there's only one thing, and the one thing that was only God himself who did it. He sent his son to earth, and Jesus died on the cross for all our sins. So believing in Jesus and, um, and trusting him uh, will open us a way for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus died for our sins, that's what we believe. And the moment we surrender our lives to Jesus with an open heart and we pray to God and we ask for forgiveness, we can become children of God. I did that once a long, long time ago when I was about 10 years old. I'll show you, I don't know whether you know Gideon Bibles. Can you see them? I have a few here, different versions. And they all have the so same sort of prayer in the end. Now, this is in German, but I will translate in English. It says, the prayer says, uh, in the inside cover at the end, it says the following. Father in heaven, forgive me my guilt. Thank you that you have forgiven my sins, because Jesus Christ died on the cross for me, and he has become my redeemer. Lord Jesus, please take the guidance over my life, or please become the ruler of my life. Change me in whatever way it is pleasing to you, according to your goodwill, to become somebody you want me to be. Thank you that you have uh, heard my prayer. Amen. That's what I did, and that's what God did. He changed my life. So now, uh, Believing in Jesus and trusting him and uh, giving all our lives to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, a Savior and Lord, we can become or we have become children of God. And that's the basis we can call God our Father. And this is really a privilege which we should never underestimate, to have a distant, holy, absolutely holy and a blameless God, not to judge us according to our sins, but to call us his children. And Jesus says we have the privilege to call him our father. So Jesus says, when you pray, say, Father, your name be honored as holy. Now, God's name is holy. Holy means absolutely blameless, without sin, without any fault or any, uh, anything dirty in it, absolutely holy. And Jesus said, your name be honored as holy, which means we should respect and see God in the holy way and manner which he really is. I don't know whether you've heard, uh, ever spoken to people who think like God is my, or Jesus is like my best friend. We are just like friends. And we are on one level, sort of. And whatever we do, we do together. And we disagree, we disagree. We are just going good friends. But I think that is not what Jesus means. Jesus means that God is absolutely holy, perfect, blameless, sinless, in great contrast to ourselves, who are not as perfect. So our attitude in prayer should be not like speaking to one-to-one, -to -one, yeah, with God, like being a good friend or with Jesus, but say, your name be honored as holy. We should regard and see God in our hearts and our minds as holy and blameless as he really is. We should respect him as the holy God who in his holiness is uh, to be seen in this way. You know, when Isaiah, when Isaiah saw the throne of God, he realized something from God's holiness and he thought he must die. And he wasn't the only one in the Bible. So whenever men see in their sins, they see God and they see God as he really is. 
they're really, really getting afraid. They become, uh, they, they get fear in their hearts. Yet at the same time, Jesus died for our sins. Our sins are forgiven. So we do not need to be afraid of God. So we can say, Father, Father, at the same time, you should respect him as the holy person uh, he really is. He is not our sort of equal, if you know what I mean, like we are on one level with him. But our basic attitude should be, Father, your name be honored as holy whenever we pray to God. Your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. This is something very interesting. Your kingdom come. When we look and Jesus said, um, or say John the Baptist said, the kingdom of God is close at hand. And when Jesus said, the kingdom of God is coming. So what he really means is uh, not a kingdom in a sort of uh, territory or land where, where God rules, but in a manner of rule. So the God where God rules, where God is ruler. So the kingdom started coming with Jesus and it continued with the church and it will find its end when Jesus finally rules over all the world. Really for us, it means your kingdom come, your rule may be coming. So your rule may be coming. How can we see God's rule working on this earth? Let's have a look. So as I understand God, he is not forcing us against our will. In fact, he, I think he forces nobody against his will. This will only be the case when the judgment comes at the end of day. Meanwhile, God is looking for people like Abraham who, is, who are willing to trust him and to follow him. So uh, trusting and following Jesus or God will allow him to change our lives, to get control of our lives and the more he is in control of our lives, the more he rules our hearts and minds, the stronger his, uh, his ruling on, on earth uh, becomes, if you know what I mean. So basically, God rules through, or God builds his kingdom, his kingship, through people on earth who are willing to have themselves changed by God. So... Um, God's rule, God's kingdom uh, grows on earth wherever his control over hearts and minds of people grow. So basically, what's his intention? Um, I have this wonderful Bible here. And God's plan is that I understand him through his word. I understand him, his, his, his personality, his acting, his doing, his will, whatever he is and however he wants me to live, I understand by understanding this word through the help of the Holy Spirit, of course. So like Romans 12, uh, Romans 11 verse 2 says, the, the renewal of our minds so that we may understand what's right before God. So the moment I understand God's word, and I follow it, I have my heart changed, I repent from my sins, I let the Holy Spirit work in my heart, the more control he gets there, the more healing is in my heart, the more Christ-likeness is in my heart, the more my, my thinking and mind becomes like Jesus, the more God will be able to rule in my life and through my life into this world. And I think that's basically for our stage of history, what God means, what Jesus means by your kingdom come. Your kingdom come means your rule on earth may grow and grow. And his rule on earth will grow first, on, first of all through me, of course. I cannot say to anybody else, well, let God's rule work in yourselves. It's going to kind of start with myself. So in the end, I can say, Lord Jesus, change my heart. To become more like you. Help me through the power of the Holy Spirit to, to in, in character and, and acting in the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit to become more and more like Christ. And the more this works out personally, the more God's rule can be in my life and change my life and through me change into the world. 
But of course, it's just an example. It's not just through me, through all of us. So the more God's will grows in my heart, the more he, he uh, really can do whatever he wants in me, within me and through me, the more his kingdom can come. So when Jesus says, Father, your name be honored as holy, your kingdom come, he really means, God, when I pray, please, you work in my heart. You be great in my heart. You be have me change the way you want me to change according to your good word and will. So Jesus said, when you pray, say, Father, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come in my heart. That's the basis, yeah? Relationship, Father, honor to God's holiness and your rule may rule in my heart. And then he says, the only then Jesus turns towards uh, personal needs. Give us each day our daily bread. Well, this is something I thought to myself, it's not really necessary to pray for that. We are living in a, in, in a world full of supermarkets and the supermarkets offer us more uh, food and anything than we can ever really eat. In fact, I think supermarkets, they should throw away uh, tons and tons of food. So really, I think uh, even if we don't need to pray for that, we should be really, really grateful. Well, sometimes my, my parents taught or relatives spoke about the Second World War and uh, when there was not really food and how they really had problems with food. So I think in our times, we should be really grateful to God that food is not an issue we even need to pray for. We should be thankful to God. Give us each day our daily bread. And in the end, everything we have and everything we own and everything we are, we really owe to God, if you know what I mean. So let's be thankful for all the bread we have. And forgive us our sins. And verse 4, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. This is a very important point. Um, I once met an, an, an old gentleman, an old man. He was over 80. He was highly gifted. He was an architect, retired. He was so gifted, he could use a pen and draw a politician's face like a photograph. Incredible. Incredible. He was just so gifted. But he was uh, a very, very strong personality as well. And he always used to say one thing, I cannot forgive and I will not forgive that the Nazis killed my girlfriend in the concentration camp. And I said to him, listen, um, God, that is God's will that you forgive. But he would not forgive and he did not want to forgive. Now, the time when he said this, I presume, I assume, that most of these uh, concentration camp um, soldiers sort of thing were already dead. But the, the anger and the bitterness was in his heart. So whenever we have things which we cannot forgive, they are doing more damage to our own hearts than to anybody else's hearts. No matter uh, how much the others deserve it, and I'm sure, these prisoner guards in the concentration camp, they deserve all punishment. And the best you can wish them is to really find or have found a belief in Jesus. So Jesus says, forgive us our sins for we ourselves also forgive everyone in debt to us. This is a very important point. In other places, Jesus says, if you do not forgive other people's sins, your own sins will not be forgiven. Now, like, uh, like the example of this old gentleman I once met, sometimes this sort of uh, bitterness and anger and hatred can be very well founded, humanly speaking. And it's only by, I have to say, by the power of the spirit that you can have healing. So in case any of us uh, who are listening now, any of us have problems in our hearts concerning bitterness, uh, really, let me tell you, I think it is something we cannot get rid how we say, of ourselves. It's like in James chapter, chapter 5, where James says, 
confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. If you have bitterness concerning anything really in your heart, please don't keep it hidden in your hearts. Talk to somebody about it, a friend or a pastor or a counselor or whoever. Pray to somebody to get rid of it because in the end, this sort of bitterness destroys more of in, in, in us than in anybody else. And it keeps us from really finding a blessing in the kingdom of God. And that's why Jesus mentions it here. It is really basic, uh, very basic for prayer. Father, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves also forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not bring us into temptation. So that's the last part. Uh, I think uh, Jesus taught this prayer various times. Uh, there's a different version in Matthew. But for here he says, do not bring us into temptation. There is sort of, I would say, basically two sorts of temptation. Um, one sort of temptation is what Satan did with Jesus when he said, look, these are all the kingdoms. I will give it to you um, if you worship me. And Jesus said, no. One sort of temptation is, is trying to lead you away from God. So if you follow the temptation, it's coming from the evil or from the human mind or out of our own sinfulness. It leads us to, to some sort of destruction with relationship to God. So, or like Adam and Eve, you know. The other sort of temptation is what Abraham experienced when God said to him, sacrifice to me your own son. And Abraham would do it. Uh, of course, God didn't want any human sacrifice. He never wants that. But um, he, Abraham did everything to sacrifice. And God says, no, I don't want it. This sort of um, temptation really wants, is when God wants to see our hearts. Is he the number one in our heart, like Abraham's heart? Would Abraham regard his only son, whom he waited for for many, many years, he was finally 100, I think, when he, when he, when he had his son, yeah, or, or he was getting his son. So this sort of temptation looks for God. Do we really see God as the absolute priority in our lives? And Jesus says to pray to God, to not bring us, to, do not bring us into temptation, which I think means that do not lead us in any sort of situation where we might be tempted um, to do anything which is not pleasing to God. So in the, in the widest sense, I would put it here, in the widest sense, do not lead us into any situation which might be tempted to do anything which is not pleasing to God. So that's uh, a prayer which Jesus said, and then he continues. He brings a very nice example. So imagine, imagine, you're at home, uh, say it's about one o'clock in the morning, you're at home in your bedroom and you're fast asleep. And all of a sudden there comes a knock on the door. It knocks on the door and it keeps knocking. And you shout out, hey, who is there? Oh, it's me, your neighbor, you know me. What do you want? Well, you know, I have a, a guest came to me all of a sudden and you know, the, the, the supermarkets are closed and I can't go into the shop. Oh, hang on. There's no supermarkets and shops around here. Anyway, I don't have any food. And you know, like in Oriental custom, when my, my, my visitor comes, my friend comes, I have to give him something to eat. And I don't have anything. Give me something that could, I could give him to eat. He needs to eat. He's hungry from his long journey. And we say, no, 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 no. You uh, leave us alone. I, I'm sleeping. Don't make so much fuss about it. He says, no, no, knock, knock, knock. You have to give me something to eat. You have to give me something to eat uh, because my neighbor needs something. So he says, leave me alone. All the kids are sleeping. Everyone, leave me alone. He said, no, 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 Jesus said, uh, give me something to eat. And Jesus says, verse eight, I tell you, even though he won't get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, or annoying persistence or shamelessness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So this is an example, it's in the context of prayer. And what Jesus really says is, um, 
you can be persistent prayer to God and God will respond, whatever you need. But please notice in an attitude which is, uh, which, in which uh, Jesus defined the prayer before. So you can ask and you can knock and you can keep knocking in an attitude of Father, your name be honored as holy, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves also forgive everyone in debt to us and do not bring us into temptation. So with this sort of attitude in the background, you can be like the man at midnight with his friend. And Jesus says, verse nine, so I say to you, keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep searching and you will find keep knocking and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives and the one who searches finds and to the one who knocks the door will be opened so this is a promise of jesus but please again only with the right sort of attitude in our minds this is not to be abused to say oh god i'm looking for my my uh, advantage of a money of a richness of a career and i knock and you promised and i can say uh, whatever uh, you keep asking it will be given to you keep searching you will find this is not true it is not a general sort of of letter that um, allows you to pray anything god is forced to give you because she's promised but because in the background we have this sort of prayer with the right uh, mindset, the right thinking in our minds. Father, your name be honored as all, your kingdom come and so on. With this sort of mindset, God will be able to work in our hearts and really do anything which is right according to his own will as it is defined in, in the Bible. So then God will really answer. Now, Jesus continues. Um, interesting thing, when, when I was young, sometimes I thought I'd pray to God. God, you can do whatever you want with my life. And then in the back of my mind, there was a thought, what if God did anything really, really bad? You know, like the missionary story, I don't know whether you ever heard the story of a missionary. He was out in the mission fields, I think in the 19th century, and the home church wrote to him, we are going to send you a wife. And he said, oh, no, not this wife. God, they are going to send me something terribly bad. Yeah. So and that's what's with me sometimes. I thought when I pray to God, you can do anything you want in my life. Will, do, will God do anything which, is, which I find bad or terrible? I don't know whether you know like thoughts like this in your mind. But I had sometimes this thought, and then it gets a bit creepy and scary when I think, now God might do things in my life which are terrible. But I can tell you from my own life, ever since I was 10 years, the things which God did and changed in my life, and though it was sometimes very difficult times, God has really, really did good things, I, and I trust him today. So in this sense, he says, Jesus, verse 11, fought father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish. So if we ask good things from God, he will not give us bad things. Or, verse 12, if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. Yeah, God is a good father and even we as people, if you then who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give anything you ask for? No, no, not anything you ask for. And this is really the surprise for me in the end. He will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Because for any prayer and request and whatever we need and want, God promised to give us Holy Spirit. And in the light of his Bible, the Holy Spirit uh, will help us to see what's right in any situation. And it comes down to, Father, your name be honored as all, your kingdom come. The Holy Spirit will help us to do the right things. So this is my sermon. The 
topic of uh, the sermon, I would call pray in a way that is pleasing to God. Pray in a way that is pleasing to God. A, your kingdom come. B, be persistent and see God's response will be good. God's response will be good. So I wish you God's blessing in, uh, for all of us to follow God's model prayer, which in the end is not just a prayer, it's an attitude of life. Father, your name be honored as holy, your kingdom come, and so on. This is gonna, should be our attitude of life within prayer and outside prayer. Amen. Thank you, Wolfgang, from sharing from God's Word today. And we have heard well about the Lord's Prayer. And uh, as he mentioned, as he started, you know, uh, what sort of um, relationship do we have with the Father? Can we call him? As he mentioned, we cannot simply call someone Father unless and until that person has a, del a relationship with him. A Father in heaven. Remember, there is a Father who is in heaven. And let's pray to God. And um, God bless you. And I'm very happy that many of us uh, could take part. I'm very sorry um, uh, that I, I'm not able to share everything in German. You know, um, it took me a say light that I can not all in Deutsch übersetzen, weil mein Deutsch ist äh, nicht so gut wie äh, Wolfgang. Ne? <lacht> ähm, aber trotzdem, ja, yeah, thank you so much for uh, taking part in the worship. And a few announcements. Um, jeden Sonntag, wir haben Gebet äh, und Gottesdienst ab 10 Uhr, 10 Uhr bis 11 Uhr. Und eine Stunde, wenn ihr habt Zeit, äh, bitte ähm, äh, mit uh, teilnehmen können, yeah? so you can take part in a worship, and uh, we are also very happy to pray for you. You know, um, I'm seeing very uh, very uh, faces today, but I'm not uh, able to recognize all of them, and uh, pray that the Lord would bless you. As we pray together, I request um, Daniel Sweeney, our dear brother, to kindly pray. Yeah, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you for your presence in our lives and thank you for loving us the way that you do. We're so grateful that we can have this relationship with you and call you Father and this opportunity to gather on a Sunday morning like this and just lift our prayers and petitions to you with thanksgiving. Father, we thank you for your daily presence in our lives, the way you continue to work in our hearts and our minds. Thank you for your word and Thank you for this community of Adonai International Church and just the opportunity to be together and to worship you, to honor you and glorify you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As the final benediction, I want to read out one Bible portion from Esther Thessalonians, Kapitel 5, um, Verses um, 6. Freut euch alle Zeit, hört niemals auszubeten. Dank Gott unter allen Umständen. Das alles will Gott von euch und das hat er euch durch Jesus Christus möglich gemacht. Vers 24. Der Herr euch beruft, ist treu. Es wird euch auch alles, ähm, es wird auch, ähm, euch auch ein Ziel bringen. Geh unter der Gnade, geh mit Gottes Segen, geh mit meinem Frieden, was auch immer du tust. Geh unter der Gnade, oh, auf Gottes Worte, bleib in seiner Nähe. 
ஆற்று வாக்சோடரூஸ் கே உண்டர கிராட கே மிட்காட சேகன் கே மிட்சாயனம் ஃப்ரீடன் வசக்வின் மடுட்டு கே உண்டர கிராட I've got a spot Blah In sign and a Up to walk So the rules Peace be with you all God bless you